Malaysia has a long established history of forest management. The first forestry officer was appointed by the British government in 1901 and this marked the beginning of systematic forest management in Malaysia. Since then, her system of forest management for perpetuity has evolved and been realigned to the principles of sustainable growth for an emerging economy like Malaysia. Malaysian government has established the National Forest Council, which serves as a forum for the state government and federal government uh, to discuss and resolve those common problems and issues relating to forestry practice, administration and management. Where this for this council determine the annual coup for each state uh, forest production. In fact, Malaysia has long been committed to sustainable forest management ahead of many other timber producing nations long before sustainability became a specific market driven demand. The Malaysian Timber Council is actively assisting the industry in managing market demands for sustainability, legality and reduced carbon footprint, all of which provide fresh challenges to forest management, conservation and the use of forest resources by the industry. I think there was a lot of progress, fortunately, towards sustainable forestry in Malaysia. And I'm going even that far, saying that Malaysia, as I feel, could serve as a sort of pilot project for neighboring countries in Southeast Asia. Selective logging, a method under sustainable forest management, is the removal of only a specified number of standing trees of predetermined size per hectare to maintain significant forest cover and wildlife habitat. Selective removal of older trees opens up the forest canopy, allowing sunlight to stimulate the vigorous growth of younger trees, promoting forest regeneration. Malaysia has designated 13.43 million hectares as permanent forest reserves. Out of this, 11 million hectares are production forest, managed to yield timber on a sustainable basis. Furthermore, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries have been increased from 1.5 million hectares in 1990 to 1.53 million hectares to date. These are the reasons why, despite its developing status, Malaysia still has almost 60% of its land area under natural forest cover. I think needed to say that the Malaysian government is very serious and put a lot of effort to ensure that timber harvesting is legal. Uh, for instance, all law and regulation pertaining to timber harvesting are clear with regard with the, to the varied licensing procedure. So, in order to extract or to fell a single tree from any area, be it permanent forest estate, state land or private land, the license must be obtained from the State Forestry Department before any action can take place. Timber certification is the process of tracking timber from the forest to a mill for further processing. The Forest Management Practices and Timber Tracking Process or Chain of Custody must be audited by a third party to ensure independent verification and transparency. Certified timber and timber products provide consumers with the assurance that the timber used originated from well-managed forests that have complied with good forest management practices as required by the forest management standard. Malaysia is one of the first tropical timber producing countries to establish its own timber certification scheme, operated by the Malaysian Timber Certification Council, which was established in 1999. The Malaysian Timber Certification Scheme, or MTCS, has now been accepted by many parties in a number of key markets for Malaysian timber products, 
which include the UK, the city of Hamburg, Denmark, France, Japan and the Netherlands in their public procurement policies. As at March 2009, more than 100 timber companies have been awarded the MTCS Certificate for Chain of Custody. Although requirements for timber certification are stringent, manufacturers have been encouraged by market demands to take to the new rulings. And what the uh, certification is regarding, uh, I think uh, the criteria you have are on a very high level. Malaysia is also actively engaged in talks with the EU on the licensing of legal timber under the EU's Forest Law Enforcement, Governance and Trade Action Plan. Malaysia is a very important trading partner for the EU and the efforts of Malaysia over the last few years to effectively control the legality of its timber operations have been considerable. We pay tribute to that. Once Malaysia enters into a Voluntary Partnership Agreement, or VPA, with the EU, there will be unimpeded access into the EU market for legally produced Malaysian timber and timber products. And now, with uh, part of this VPA, we want uh, to agree on a unique certification scheme that Malaysia will, uh, will agree upon and that uh, it will be the only certification scheme that will be uh, accepted for all the Malaysian products entering into the EU. Okay? So the work that we have in front of us is for the Malaysian side to discuss and make a proposal of what is the unique certification that will uh, have all the Malaysian Timber, uh, Malaysian timber and timber products enter in the EU. And from the moment there is an agreement and this agreement is signed, only the Malaysian timber and timber products that will have this uh, proof of legality of origin that will be agreed upon will be allowed to enter the European market. So it's an assurance for the Malaysian industry as well as an assurance for the consumers of Malaysian products in Europe that only legal timber has entered into the market. The market is challenging, but Malaysia is fast evolving into a key player. Malaysia is devoted to maintaining competitiveness in the global timber market despite shifting environmental concerns and market demands. The market is changing, and Malaysia is changing along with, if not ahead of it.